All right, guys. Well, we're out here in the shop, and as you can see, I've got another little project that I've got started here. Uh, pick this up. I uh, emailed the people at Quality Machine Tool, and I asked about whether or not they had any pieces of equipment that had been damaged or returned for whatever reason. They emailed me back and said that they had a couple of machines, one that was a milling machine and one that was a lathe and of course I was looking for another mill and another lathe and just by chance they happened to have one of each but the milling machine is in pretty pretty bad shape. It was damaged pretty bad in shipping but I'm going to make use of what I can off of that machine and try to build another mill and this lathe is actually not in too terrible shape. It's got a D14 spindle on it which is real nice. I picked up this chuck. Uh, it's a gator chuck from a friend of mine and uh, he didn't need it so I bought that from him and I put it on there today and I've been tinkering around a little bit, taking a little bit apart, a little bit off of here, a little bit off of there, some things that aren't going to be used anymore. This is a uh, board over here that came from the original DC two horsepower motor that was mounted in the back over here and I've got a motor like it's on the mill. It's a uh, marathon inverter duty horse and a half. 1800 RPM 4 pole. I figured it'll have plenty of torque for anything I need to do and uh, we'll, we'll see how that turns out if, if so I can always upgrade the motor or whatever but uh, I was out here taking some things off and taking it apart and kind of looking around seeing what needed to be done where to start and everything. I picked up a tool post got it started to figure out what I needed to do here to get it within the center of the spindle and everything so I figured well I need to kind of kind of go ahead and do a little video and get things <clears throat> get everybody aware of what's going on and I also contacted uh, DMM about some servos and I have already purchased the servos from them I'll be showing how I'm going to integrate those servos into this build. 750 watt motor for the z-axis and a 400 watt motor for the x-axis. The x-axis is actually a 60 millimeter and the z-axis servo is a 86 millimeter. So that's pretty close to a NEMA 34, but it's, it's metric, so it's not exactly NEMA 34. They have 14 millimeter shafts coming out of them, and I think they're going to be just fine. The, the motor's are going to have plenty of torque, plenty of RPM. Lay should move plenty fast, shouldn't have any problems with uh, power or anything from the servos. They should serve me very well. Uh, I'll be documenting the build as I go, and and everything and showing how I incorporate those DMM servos into the build. Uh, that's pretty much it for today guys. Uh, I'll get another snippet out when I start trying to get everything set up and get everything more in place but I did figure that I would do a little intro video as far as showing the machine and talking about it and introducing the new build so um, with that being said and, and you can tell the uh, of course the mill it's still in the crate over here I got it wrapped up pretty good so it's still in the box but as far as the uh, lathe back over here um, it's a really nice chuck 
buddy in Texas uh, did so I've done some work for him and he and I talk quite frequently and he told me about this Chuck he had so he sent it on to me uh, I'm planning on using a, a acorn controller board so I'll have a spindle encoder and It'll be a, it. It won't be Mach three. It's gonna. I'm gonna use Centroid to control this this lathe. Um, it'll be a graduation from Mach three, I believe. Nothing wrong with Mach three. I just I want to try to use the encoder for this lathe so I can do a little bit more stuff more reliably. And uh, that's that's the way I believe to go about doing it. So. I'm on switch on out to that if I if I can if I can get everything to work. Um, the same person that I bought this chuck from actually had a centroid board and he's uh, he sent that board to me so that uh, I can try to uh, incorporate it in this build. Um, there's <clears throat> there's the motor. It's the same motor as what's on the mill. Uh, all this stuff on the end out here um, this was part of the damage the fly wheel here was pulley was broke and um, there's some other pecker tracks on it the the enclosure for the uh, fan belt assembly and all was boogered up pretty good there it was it was hit with something there when it was being shipped or whatever but this pulley seems to be the the biggest terminal damage that there is to the whole machine there's some little superficial damage on this other side over here for the uh, control panel where it's it's busted up pretty good here on the end but none of this stuff is really going to be of any use to me so this is an interlock switch for the door. None of that. That's none of that's really any important. Um, pretty much all of this is going to come off anyway, and I'm gonna. I'll end up making some plates to cover these holes up. And uh, we got these gear select knobs down here for threading and whatnot, gear feed and all. Uh, all this stuff's gonna come off. Probably, more than likely, all this stuff can come right off along with the lead screws on this side here. You got the lead screw and then you've got the uh, drive for the feed. All that stuff's going to come off. This uh, gearbox right here, where this, this is your sight glass for your oil. All this stuff here is going to try to come off. It, I think it can come completely off, including the housing and um, it seems to be a uh, seam here so possibly all of this can come completely off of this uh, bed and I can probably use these machine surfaces to mount all my conversion brackets and stuff for the uh, z-axis here it seems to be on this particular machine if you look here, this, this surface that runs all the way down underneath the edge of this, this rail right here, this surface right here seems to be a machine surface the entire length of the bed. So that's a very big bonus right there to have a machine surface that runs the entire length of the machine so you can use it for referencing as far as uh, mounting the support bearing on the end and on the opposite end down there to mount the uh, motor bracket and bearing block and all down on that end so all this will all this will come off and there will be nothing left from about this line down everything will be this entire apron here will come completely off uh, probably incorporate in the plate for this apron the new apron I'll probably incorporate the motor bracket and everything for the uh, motor mount and everything up here so 
to drive this table back and forth. Uh, pretty beefy castings. Uh, seem to be. It seems looks like it's going to be a really, really rigid machine. Uh, these these castings are nice and thick. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, it's a nice machine. It's, it's for a CNC lathe. that's maybe just a tiny little bit long, but 28 inches. Um, 24 would be probably maximum good usage for a CNC lathe. 28 might give me opportunity for a secondary spindle or something. We'll just have to see in the future what happens. Uh, could possibly could possibly put some rails back here on this end and mount a secondary spindle. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. I, uh, I don't know. A lot could go on here. There's a lot of possibilities here. Uh, for a live spindle, if you run a 36 inch bed, you would probably have more room to do that, but you would lose some rigidity. But this machine is probably on the very limit of being fairly rigid. It's a lot healthier than I expected it to be, but. Uh, for a small machine, it, uh, it it's it's pretty pretty stout. Uh, as you can tell here, looking at this this bed here is is it's pretty good size uh, foot here on this front with the headstock and all. And the, oops, yeah, knocking some stuff over. But the headstock seems to be very very nice size. It's the spindle from from the tapered nose here all the way out to the end is 15 inches so it's a pretty good size spindle pretty good size headstock so uh, I believe it's going to be a real nice machine real rigid machine when I get finished with it so alright guys well these little lays look like they're they look like they're they're worth the money uh, they're a little more expensive than than most by I'd say maybe fifteen hundred dollars but seeing it and seeing what's here and the way the castings look and everything uh, I believe they're worth the extra money for the uh, for the machine we'll know a little farther along down the road but it, it's looking like it's a really nice really nice machine so it's a lot better than what I've got so you know without that being said I'll let that be where we are now these are the change out gears and stuff back here and this is a it's a belt tensioner of some sort here uh, but all that stuff pretty much most of all this stuff here is going to come off I may have a belt tensioner on it I don't know if it's going to be one like this it may be one that's kind of spring loaded or something that keep tension on it but I'm gonna to try to go with a serpentine belt if I can uh, that's why I took this spindle off or this fully off of here so I could kind of get some measurements and see what I could find to put on here for um, serpentine belt drive so but yeah it, it's it's a really nice machine I believe I think it's going to be work out really good so all right guys well that's it for now uh, one more look at the machine pretty much uh, nice tail stocks uh, MT MT2 or MT it's an MT3 taper I just picked up that center from uh, all industrial they had they got another one in there that I'd really like to have it's got the the change out ends here you can swap them out different style and it gives you a little bit more room this is what they call the CNC type this gives you a little bit more room for your tool to come in here and and work on your piece so that's why this one is shaped like this is live so um, the other one actually has a little more room 
and you can pop these 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 uh live center pieces out pop them out and dry and stick another one in that's shaped different for what you're working on they got small ones big ones they got a long one with a long taper on it and then they got a bull nose style so I like it pretty good it was really reasonably priced and I'll probably go back and get it from them there that was industrial all industrial tool company so yeah uh, there's the tool post I just got this from them as well I got the uh, I was gonna get a wedge type but they didn't have it in stock so <clears throat> I went ahead and got the piston type I've ran a piston type one for years and I've never had any issues with it it's super rigid that was, they're both really rigid so uh, I don't see any issues with that I kind of like the way this one looks it's it's it looks different than the wedge type but it works just as good I believe so all right guys that's it kind of look around you might start seeing some new some new lathe work going on around here all right guys thanks for watching as usual subscribers welcome and see you later